I'm back for another snippet. Yes, I've had a project for my husband to work on, so he won't be up here today. <laughs> he wanted me to move some more of these chairs. See how chairs are back? Oh, these are so comfortable. So we've got two up here. I can see there's a little damage here on some of them. That's a shame. Or the vinyl or the whatever that is rubbed off. That's a shame. But we had to tie them down really tight in a uh, trailer. And I think probably part of the tie-down strap must have gotten there. Oh, what a shame. Well, at least it's under the arm and you can't see it too much. This one looks good. So, yes, these have been here 25 years. <laughs> now, is that true? Let me think. No, because this is where my sewing room. You know, the two tables in there with the big, long, pink tops? They're pink for Micah because I was into mauve and blue in those days when we built this house the carpet was all blue and i wish it still was i love that blue carpet this is so boring but um when i had to move my long arm here and i turned the attic into living space um for my machines and my two long tables see the, you can't see this but there's plugs in the floor here because this is where all my machines used to be that's why the pegboard is up there and um, when I moved my long arm from our commercial building in town uh, to here, we made that big room. And so Jerry decided he wanted this. He always wanted this room. You all remember who've been watching me a long time. And hey, if you're new, I have new people. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Joy. I'm so, so excited you subscribed to my channel. I haven't even been making videos. And I still have new subscribers. I'm so excited. I have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of old videos, though. So you probably found me through one of my old, old videos. But um, he always wanted this room. And the deal was, he got the barn, and I got the bonus room upstairs. Remember that? Well, he always wanted this for his big screen. You know, TVs are so big now, I don't know why you need these big screen things at all. But uh, he wanted that all along. So when I moved in there, we bought these recliners, and we put up the big movie screen and the, the bats hanging from the wall for surround sound, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Uh, the sound, I don't know, I guess it's a man thing. You tell me if any of you care if the airplane sounds like it just flew through one ear and out the other ear. I don't care. I'll be sitting here just watching, and all of a sudden it's, whoa, great big sound coming from back there through my head <laughs> oh, I don't know to me the sound bars or however the TV sounds to start with it's fine with me but man you know god you should see our new neighbor next door oh the media room he has it's like a real movie theater it's just it's not as big as a real movie theater but it's huge huge for a house and my nephews have that in their homes. And every place we see a new house, they all have those media rooms. But uh, for us, this is ours. And we had, we bought six of these recliners for in here. Now, one recliner is downstairs where I keep it in my joy room. And we only use five of these up here. So the tables that go in between and around all of these recliners are still in mounds. So next trip, we need to move back our kitchen table, eight kitchen chairs the tables let me see there's one two three three tables that go in here uh, coffee table and two side tables we have to move those back here so next trip uh, we may need something bigger than Jerry's trailer I don't know he always says oh everything will fit on that well then everything doesn't fit on that. <laughs> but I don't have to do any big moving anymore from here or from there. So praise God for that. I'm so, so happy. I can halfway relax. I know y'all listen to me and you think, you're never relaxed, Joy. Um, so let me show you this. I am because sometimes my blood pressure is only like 130. I think it was 127 last night. When I was at the new cardiologist's office, it was 192. <laughs> it was! They finally got it down to 182, so they decided they'd accept that. But the cardiologist is a DO, and I'm not sure what a DO is, but I hear they're not real big on pushing drugs, and I'm so thankful for that. Because he didn't say, oh my goodness, you have to have 10 drugs, your blood pressure's terrible.
terrible. He just said, go home and keep track of your blood pressure different times of the day, once a day each day for a couple weeks. So that's what I've been doing. And so it, the highest it's been is like 160 something. And, uh, and you know, your blood pressure is up and down, up and down. Jerry sits down and totally doesn't move. Of course, he, you know, he's, he's Mr. Super Relaxed anyhow, but he sits down and just stays real, real still for 15 minutes. Then he takes his blood pressure. He just came in and said it was 118 over something. I said, oh my goodness, how can you even move? <laughs> Did I tell you the project I gave him? Years ago, I bought a stainless steel grill for our patio here in the back. And we used it a lot, many, many, many years. And it finally just fell apart. You know, we even bought some new parts one time and they still fell apart. So we tossed that, Jerry uh, hauled it off to the metal place where they buy your metal for 10 cents. And um, he ordered a new grill for here. Well, so then when we bought the other house and we were supposedly gonna sell this house, he never opened the new grill. So it's still in a great big box over in his barn because we just assumed we'd be moving it up there. Well, now we're not going up there, are we? <laughs> and I wanted to make something the other night and I had no grill to make it on. So I said, hey, since it's a beautiful day and it's gonna be in the 70s and I'm gonna turn the heat off up here for heaven's sake, <laughs> I've got sweat on my upper lip. Since it's a gorgeous day, why don't you bring that grill over to the patio and let's, 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 let us put it together. Well, of course, he won't let me do anything except go get things out of the box or go get things out of the garage and bring them to him. But that's something. So his project today is to put that grill together. Isn't it unbelievable? Everything you buy now, you have to put it together yourself. So here's the fabric I found in my attic that I told you was pink. And it's the same on both sides. I'm wondering if it's a batik because that's very unusual. So I'm gonna make a blouse out of this today. Do I know which blouse? No. And did I make this blouse? Yes, I did. I made the black blouse and then I made the um, design with my scan and cut and vinyl. And it says, happiness is a full bobbin. And I'm wearing pants I made years ago. I don't know if you can see my pants. They're like pedal pushers because it's gonna be a sunny day. And I'm gonna go outside and get some vitamin B, and I'm gonna stay inside and make a new blouse. You wanna watch me? I'll be back. So look where I am. I know. Cleaned off my cutting table. I need another cutting table here. I don't know if I can get that by Jerry. You know, if y'all will give me some thumbs up, would you give me some thumbs up and maybe watch a commercial or two? My last check from YouTube was so small. I told Sherry it would probably be $50 today. I haven't even looked because I was getting embarrassed because my YouTube channel is so, you know, not there right now. But, um, yes, if I get a lot of thumbs up, let me see what else can you do. And subscribe. I think you're already subscribed. But um, maybe share my video. I know when people watch me for the first time, they're like, that lady's crazy. She's just crazy. But if they watch me two or three times, then they get to like me. How many of you are like that? I bet a bunch of you. I watched some guy one time. I don't know who he was. But I searched sewing videos, and I watched him, and he was sewing clothes. And you talk about somebody I thought was crazy. I know you think I'm hyper. Uh... But this guy was, oh, four times worse. And I just thought, oh my goodness, how can anybody watch this crazy nut? And when I scrolled down to look at the comments, people absolutely adored him. He had all kinds of comments telling, telling him how great he was and how wonderful he was and how much they loved his personality. So, different strokes for different folks, right? So here's the top I showed you yesterday. I'm gonna make two today. I'm going to make, well, that is if Jerry doesn't call me down to help him with making the grill. He's still working on getting it over here. So this is a whole top. Why do I have a whole top instead of half a top? Because in order to cut it apart for the stripes, you have to have a whole front. So I have taped it all back together, and it's still a whole front, but I'm only going to cut out half of this paper from center front on the fold, 
over because both sides are exactly the same. Now, there's no stripes involved. This is just all this black knit with these poppies, it looks like. Oh, you know what I don't have? Oh, no. How can I sew? I don't have my weights. You know, my little washer weights. Here's the back. The back is cut with a seam going up the back because the back is curved. Now, I didn't build that curve in there. I put a little bit of it in there, but the pattern actually calls for that. And it's 3 8 inch seam allowance. This is the band. If you ever find a pattern that has these bands around the neck or around the arm, use them. They're very, very nice. They're, you don't have to hem. You just sew the band on and it's finished. So, very nice. I will probably use my usual method of cutting a binding, multiplying it by 7 eighths. That makes it shorter. You measure the whole neckline all the way around. I'll show you when I do it. Then you multiply it by 7 eighths on your telephone, on your telephone, <laughs> on your cell phone or your calculator. And it's usually like an inch, inch and a half less. And that might not be enough depending on how stretchy. How stretchy something is makes a big difference in how you make it. But this stuff is very stretchy. So I'm going to cut this out. It goes together very, very fast. Now remember, I cut it down. Now how do I know if this is going to fit me? If you're cutting out a pattern, if you're a new seamstress, this is, was my very, very, very first video years and years ago. Somebody said, how can I make sure a pattern is going to fit me? I actually made a video in my pajamas. <laughs> so what you can do is you can figure out where your bust is, where your hip is. Sometimes the pattern envelope will tell you. But what I do is I take the actual pattern. You've got 3 8 inch seam allowances. Uh, imagine that's all over, yeah. 3 8 inch seam allowances. So you take a measuring tape. Hold on, I need a measuring tape. I'm not sure where the measuring tape department is. <laughs> Ta-da! So what you do, I'd say my hip is about right here because I know it's under my boobs. Waist, the waist is as wide as the hips in this, so that's not going to be a problem. So you come in 3 8 inch, measure across. This is 22 inches. 22 inches just in the front. So you can see that's plenty. So let's see how much is in the back. Let's do 22 inches and add it to the back where the hip is. Okay, so there's another 22 inches in the back, in the hip. My hips are 41. So you have to determine how big are your hips, how much ease do you want. The ease is the extra. It's how much extra you have. And since this is a super, super stretchy knit, I'm pretty sure that 44 inches is going to be plenty to cover 41. That's an extra 3 inches. All right, so I told you I don't have any weights, so we're going to improvise. We're going to do it the Peggy Sagers way. Peggy Sagers puts the remote control to her TV down and does this. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Then you've got to have a rotary cutter. This one actually does have a blade in it. It's a pretty blade. It's gold. Goodness, I don't know how I got that, but it's sure pretty. Alrighty, here we go. The bus dart doesn't even have a point on this top. I don't know why, but it doesn't. Now you've got to know where center front is, which you should. And if you're using a pattern that's not this pattern, you'll know where center front is and you place it on the fold. Most knits are made that way. Put the snake where there. Actually works pretty good. I'd rather have a ruler though. Let's have a ruler. Where's the ruler department? <laughs> um, this is an Omnigrip. Now, if you get rulers that don't have any sticky stuff on the back, that's why I love Quilter Select. You can buy these little sticky dots. Some of them look like sandpaper. Some of them are sandpaper. And these are just um, acrylic or something. So I'm going to put this up here to cut 
the shoulder. And I should have my glove on, shouldn't I? I have my glove. I only have one glove. <laughs> the other glove's probably at the other house. <sighs> constant, constant. So now I've cut around the paper pattern. And the next thing you always have to do, that needs to be adjusted right there. Sometimes knit wants to slide on top of itself and you have to maybe adjust it later. So I'm going to adjust this and cut both sides the same. I'm going to make the neck look weird. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is cut the notches and get yourself a good pair of scissors. I don't know how many scissors I have. Dozens, dozens. And some of them just will not cut. Even when they're almost new, they won't cut to the point. See, that one didn't. It cut almost to the point, but not all the way. Oh, so you gotta cut past the point. So there's one notch there. There's a notch at center front, and I'm gonna put a little tiny cut there. There's not a notch at center front, but I'm cutting a little tiny clip. Make it a short clip, because you've only got 3 8 inch to work with there. So I've got a notch there. I have a bust dart. So I'm going to cut. Uh, this rotary cutter isn't sharp. <laughs> oh, what a shock that is. Okay, so I'm going to cut the points of the dart, the ends of the dart, okay? Remember, you've only got 3 8 inch. And there it is where it's off again. Let me put this goofy stuff. And one notch came out and one notch didn't. Oh, frustrating. Be patient if you're going to sew. Be patient or you're going to hate it. You'll have scissors that don't work. You'll have fabric that's difficult. But you are the boss of the fabric. So check and see. If it only wants to cut through one layer, then deal with it. All right, now I need a pin to mark the point of the bus dart. Bus darts have a point, but the point of the dart never, ever, 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 ever goes all the way to your apex. Yeah, very true. So I'm going to put that in there. Now I hope I've got some friction markers here. Hello, where are you? So I need a friction marker to mark. Friction markers dry up pretty quick, my friends. But if you have some that aren't dried up, mark the point. You can see me going dab, 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 dab. So I've got the point marked to the bus dart. I will take the pin out, and then we'll see how much more of this didn't cut right. Let's see how much more didn't cut right. This will be the front of my glass. You know, I've still got Lucy here. Oh, look, it, it did. The rest of it cut pretty good. So this is the front of my glass. Now, the next thing that you need to do when you're making clothes, let me turn the camera up. So when you're sewing, it's very important. Now, this, this garment's probably not going to have an issue with it. But you want to make sure, boy, I've seen some crazy, crazy garments that girls have made, and they paid no attention to this. Hold it up. Actually, what you need to do is not cut it out first. What you do is you hold your pattern, your paper pattern up, and you mark where the tip of your dart is, or your apex. You can mark your actual apex if you want to. Then look underneath it and see what's going to cut out. And if something strange, look like that little flower right there, probably going to end up right on my apex, maybe that one. But it's not just a single dot. <laughs> It's not an X, it's not a point, it's not a dot. So this is floral, so that'll be okay, it won't be a problem. But if it was something where the pattern ended up in a strange way at the tip of your bust, don't do that. It looks bad. I saw a garment lady made out of polka dots, and the polka dots weren't real close to each other, they were far apart from each other. And she had one, and they were bright, colored with circles going around. She had one on each boob. I thought, how can she look at that picture and not see that? I don't know. But this is going to be the front of my black blouse. Isn't it pretty? 
I got this fabric at Joann's. I think they still even have it. The grain on a knit isn't as important as the grain on a woven. I mean, just get your pattern as good as you can. Oh, you want to know somebody really good to watch on how to make knits? She's adorable. And um, I really like her. Okay, her name is Pamela from Pamela's Patterns. Google her, look her up. She has really, really good um, instructional videos on how to work with knits. And she has patterns. And her patterns are for old people. So you usually don't have to do a round back and things like that. Yeah. So I'm going to measure and make sure this lines up with the salvage. So that is 12 and a quarter. So that's 12 and an eight. And 12 and an eight. So that is the straightness of this pattern. I'm going to get my new funky weights out and I'm going to cut this back now. Get my ruler and cut the shoulder. I like straight lines cut with a ruler if you can do it. Hopefully you've got a sharper one than this. I think I actually have some blades here. Ta-da! Have a trash can. I had a lady clean my house years ago when I used to work every day at our store. We had a medical equipment business called Family Medical Supply. And um, I had a friend who offered to clean the house, because that's what she did, was clean houses. She said one time, do you know you have 21 trash cans up there? I said, I know. And I said, every single one has something in it, doesn't it? The back is almost cut out. Let's hold it up and see what it looks like. Well, it can't really. It's not on the fold. If you have a sway back, it is really good to have a seam down the center of your back. This blade is horrible. I probably ran over a pin with it or something. I do that. In fact, I think I ran over a paper clip with it yesterday when I was trimming the paper. Yeah, I just don't like that. <laughs> I always buy more fabric than I know I'm going to need because you can always fix boo-boos if you have some more fabric, which is nice. Like if I have to cut out a whole new back or a whole new front, this is still cutting out one layer. Could you scream, Jelly Bean? Hello. Okay. Cut the notch there. There's a uh, a dot. I don't know what that dot means, so I'm going to ignore it. There's no notch there. There's one notch on the other side. Let me see my purple scissors. What kind are they? I don't know. They are Kai! Kai purple scissors. Woohoo! How nice is that? All right, so here's the back, Jack. It is cut out. One side of the back, two sides of the back. So this is ready to sew. All I have to cut out is the um, template for the arm. Now I have changed the arm bolt to be like a size six <laughs> because as you could see on the one I was wearing yesterday, it's very, very big. So I am making, actually it says size eight, size eight. So I'm gonna cut out a size eight. This blouse will go together so fast. The hard part about making garments is all of the preparation you do before you ever cut it out. Make the corrections to the paper. I have lots of videos on it. If I knew how to put videos here and there, I, I would, but I don't think I know how to do that yet. <laughs> but um, paper fitting, it's called Palmer and Plesh. It's their method and I love it. So as much as you can do to your paper pattern, like what? Like make the neck smaller. Necks always gape on me. 
Make the neck smaller. Make the shoulder slope right. If you've got really straight shoulders, you don't need a slope. You need straight. <laughs> Make a full bust adjustment. Make a sway back adjustment. There are so many things you can do in the paper. Then, sewing is a lovely, relaxing exercise. I know. I used to, now back when I was young, and you know, even then I thought I had issues with my body. <laughs> I guarantee you, if God would give me that body back, I would just thank him so much, so much. <laughs> oh, yes, you just don't appreciate what you have. Mostly because of television. We didn't have the internet back then, you know. Mostly because of television. And um, thinking that you've got to look like these people that are full of silicone. They don't look any better than you do in real life. They don't. They're plastic people. Plastic people. Have you seen the eyelashes these girls are wearing? My goodness. Some of them look like they got attacked by a tarantula. It's terrible. They just overdo it. They're young. We were all young once. I used to do goofy, goofy things too. Thank God they didn't have tattoos then. Although, I never smoked or drank. So, I was pretty smart when I was young. And didn't want to do things I thought would harm my brain. So, here's the two. Um... Here's the two bands that you sew to the bottom. See, like this. You sew them on the, on, around the arm. You don't sew them on the bottom. You sew them around the arm, and then the arms are done. So easy. You just sew them together on the ends, and so you have a circle, and then you fold it in half, and then you sew it to the arm opening in the box. Okay, so that's that one. All cut out, ready to put together. I will need a strip for the neck, but I'll figure that out later. I go, why? Why will I figure it out later? Because when I get the top put together, I will measure the neck opening. The real, real size. You, the real size on the paper isn't going to match the real size on the garment. And maybe sometimes. And I'll stabilize it and try to get it as good as the pattern. But then I will measure the hole my head's going to go through. And then I'll take 7 eighths times that measurement. So that's why I'm not cutting it yet. So let's fold this up. See how much is left? See how much is left? A lot. How much was that, Joy? Uh, probably two and a half yards. That's usually what I buy. And if I think I'm going to make a dress out of it, um... I'll buy three, but I don't. I don't want to make dresses anymore out of knits. You know why? They wrap around your lumps and your bumps. They wrap around your belly. They wrap around your chest. They wrap around your rear end. And I would much rather have another kind of fabric that stands out a little bit and doesn't, you know, grab all your curves. So for the pink fabric, boy, my wall sure does look crooked. It looks really crooked. <laughs> So for the pretty pink fabric, I'm going to make this again. I have made this one, two, three, four times and probably more than that. And I love it, but I'll put it on and then I always take it off because I need to wear a strapless bra with it. And I don't know if you all have any strapless bras, but you might as well bandage yourself in heavy packing tape. I mean, good grief. Talk about discomfort. <laughs> so, I love the blouse, but... It always slides off, slides sideways and shows my bra strap because they're just right at the very, very edge. And you can see here that I added like a quarter inch to where it comes over to cover my bra. So I'm getting ready to add some more today. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to cut it out and see if I can make a top that will stay put on my roller coaster shoulders. Love this top. Ah, there's one pattern that I've made a million times that's not available anymore, but I don't know, I don't know if it's this one. This is McCall's 4845, and it's got really cute shorts and pants, 
and round neck tank or the one with the sleeves that I'm getting ready to make this v-neck. I love, 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 love this pattern. So I'm going to go over to my other table and I'm going to cut this out. My goodness, it has two pieces, a front and a back. It has, can't even read it, it has a, uh, since that's a V, you can see it. Now, remember, if you add to the front or the back at the neck, you've got to do it to the facings too. There's the front and the back facing. The uh, sleeves, you just fold up and sew. So I can make both these blouses today. And it's already 11.15 in the morning. Okay, I'm going to go cut this out. Then I'm going to have two blouses to make. And then I'll be I figured you'd probably want to know this too. <laughs> so how am I going to make this shoulder come closer to my neck so it will quit sliding off my bra strap? What I'm going to do is, since I don't have any colored paper here yet, since I moved it all to the other house, I might. Oh, well, I do. But anyway, I found this um, post-it notepad, and it has squares on it. And I thought, oh, I think I'll try that. That might work out good. So I have it post-it noted to my cutting board. These are my um, Ulfa cutting mats. So I'm going to come out here another half inch. How do I know a half inch? Because one of these is a quarter inch, right? Let me make sure. Yes, exactly. So get your curve. Bring it out here to the new, the new shoulder line. My goodness, I can't have it all the way to my neck or it'll ruin the style. So see there? Now this part here has to be a 90 degree, does it? Yeah, it needs to be a 90 degree at first, but then it can go down. Just a tiny bit, 90 degree. Why is that, Joy? I don't remember right now. I just know it does. <laughs> all right, so I have added this much, and I've got scotch tape there, so hard to color over the tape but you can see right there I have just added a half inch up here up here so it will be hello, right here I added it so it will be closer to my neck like this top is okay but still be a V I still want a V I don't look good in other shapes or as good so that's how I have to do it now the next thing is whatever you do to the front shoulder you have to do to the back shoulder. You know, that makes sense. Still talking to my nephew. He is such a sweetheart. He offered to come down here, three hour drive. He offered to come down here to help us move those heavy recliners upstairs and help Jerry with the heavy grill. He's a doll. And his wife is a doll too. She is a doll. I just love those two and their kids. I don't know all their kids yet. And their kids don't know me. I uh, was with them several times when they were babies. And I used to give them bananas a lot. They both loved bananas. Just a set of twins. And the twins would come to my house. And the two big brothers. But those twins just loved bananas. I used to give them lots of bananas. <laughs> oh, all right, let's come to the back. Get your This works pretty good. Hey, you know what? I might recommend this. I should put this in my Amazon store and everybody can buy some. This actually works really good because you can make that stay, see, because it's a post-it note. Then you can take your garment and you can put it on one of the stripes, one of the stripes, right there, right there. Now the back is not a V-neck. I've got to get it so it's right on there so I can change the curve. Okay, so we have to add a half inch back here. So line it up with a quarter inch line there. Any line, pick a line. Leave yourself some room for cutting. You always have to true the curve or the shape, whatever the shape is. You've got to true it after you make these corrections. So here's the new curve right here. So this curve, match your, match your curve. You can see the curve that's already there. Move it up to your new mark. Move it down. There you go. It'll be a little different, but that's all right. 
supposed to be different. So there it is. So here's what I'm adding to the back, see? Right there. That's what I'm adding to the back. And this is what I added to the front. See? Now hopefully, <laughs> this will stay put. We'll find out. This is so easy to make. I'm telling you, it is so easy to make. I love, I love simple patterns. I want something new to wear, but I don't want to spend days making it. I'm not a couture person. I don't care if my mother used to say, my mother was an awesome seamstress. She used to say, if somebody's name is going to be on my clothes, it's going to be my name. And I agree with her. I don't care if somebody's name's on my purse, on my clothes. I, I, that just doesn't interest me whatsoever. In fact, I have not bought some things because they have names all over them. It's like, look at me, look at me, look at how much money I spent on this. I'm just not that personality. <laughs> I buy a lot of stuff at Walmart, y'all. T-shirts. You know what I buy at Walmart the most? Hoodies. Just love their hoodies. And they come in so many colors. Ha! Now, you know, I've got to change the two facings. You don't need to watch me do that. I'll do it the exact same way. So, I'll be back after a while and show you my progress. I'm back. Let me tell you something important. When you're doing the facings, don't just draw any old curve with this thing. The facing has to match perfectly the neckline you just made for the front and the back. So this is the back facing. So I took the pattern and I lined it up. And I lined it up with the old line. And then I drew the new neckline directly from the pattern. Because this facing, let's see if it matches perfect. Let's look and see. You can't just do a new curve, because every time you do that, you'll make a different curve, probably. And you want to make sure it matches the curve you already have. Okay, so here's my new facing. Put more tape. you got to have enough tape. Chop things up. This is like making paper dolls. It's so fun. <laughs> All right. New back neck facing. Let's take the back neck of the pattern and let's line it up and see if it fits perfect. And it does. See there? So that's how you draw the facings. Because you're going to sew this right here. You're going to sew this, 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 this. You're going to sew that curve. So those have to match exactly. All right, here's the front neck facing. So I'm gonna pin it on here, next to one of the stripes. I know that the extension on this is gonna come out this way, so I'll leave room for it. This is removable tape. I should be using a different kind of tape. Now I'm gonna take the front of the pattern. Here's the new neck. I'm gonna line it up. I'm going to fold it on that new red line right there. So that's where the old one was. And here's where the new one is. And so I'm going to draw this curve because it's actually quite different. Put that where that used to be. Put this where this used to be. Draw your line. Like that, more or less. Let me see. Looks like it wants to go like this. Line your curve up the way it wants to be. Like that. I need some tape that stays stuck, not removable tape. Let's see if this fits the front now. Perfect. There you go. Added the half inch. Let's get the front. Let's line this up to the front. 
and make sure it matches. Put center front on center front. It looks like it's a hair off, but not much. And I've got the sticky part on the back of it, so it keeps sticking to things. <laughs> Make sure you don't get the post-it glue, like I did. Okay, so here we are. Are you going to stay? Line that up. Use your new fancy weights. Line this up. And the curve is just a hair off. There we go. So now they match perfect. What you have to do with this pattern is sew the shoulder seams together, come under the arm, put the bust dart in. Mine has a bust dart. Yours won't unless you put a bust dart in it. But mine has a bust dart. Put the bust dart in it. Sew the side seams. Hello! You're done. I have one, two, three sewing machines in this house now. Only three. <laughs> I have a B740, I have my 11, yeah, that's my 1130, it's the second machine I bought from Bernina, and I have my Virtuoso 155, which I bought from Bernina years later. This is just a little machine that it was uh, supposedly for quilting or something, I don't know. I went to a class, and you know how it is when you go to those Bernina classes, they always say something, or you think you need to buy something, it's more like that. So I'm going to sew the fabric that's cotton on the Virtuosa with a regular needle. I am going to sew my knit, I already started it, on my B740 with a stretch needle and my even feed foot and 3 8 inch seam allowance. So the first thing you do is you sew the center back seam together. This is so easy. It is so, so easy. The hard part of sewing, as I always say to you, is ending up with a garment you'll wear because it fits you. I tell you, the stuff you buy in the store, they don't ever, well I'll say, they hardly ever put bus darts in knits. Well, and this has a bus dart in it. I haven't put the bus dart in yet, but I will. The shoulders, sewing the shoulders together. <clears throat> Line it up. I can't believe there wasn't a notch in this hot pattern in the shoulders, but there wasn't. Now remember how I do the pins. I have seen people put pins in and just go like this and like that and take a giant, giant bite. I don't do it that way. You can do it that way if you want to. I've seen some people put them in going, is it called perpendicular? Parallel? <laughs> going straight with the seam. I've seen other people putting them in like I put them in. But what you want to do, if you're me, <laughs> if you want to know how I do it, let's put it that way. I stick the pin in the seam allowance, which is 3 8 inch or close to, then I take an itty bitty bite. Now that can't move. If you do it the other way with the big bite, your fabric can move all over the place. And you may or may not get it sewn together right. See, so I just take little bitty, and of course you remove the pins as you come to them. Now some people probably wouldn't pin at all, but I am gonna pin it all. So let's do that shoulder. When I start sewing, I start sewing a little past where you're supposed to start, and I sew backwards for a few stitches. Somehow that seems to help fabric from going all nutty, especially when you're making a quilt. I have a stretch needle in. See, it doesn't that so nice. I love my machines, you guys. I just love my machines. Why do I have so many machines? Because I started buying them in 1986. Before that, I bought one when I got married the first time. I was 18 years old, had a baby, and uh, decided I wanted a sewing machine, so I went to Sears and I bought a Kenmore. That machine was $200. Back then, that might as well have been $2,000 for how much I could afford it. I probably made payments for five years or something. <laughs> oh, those days are gone. Thank goodness.
this. Now wait, I've evidently sewn the wrong shoulder to the right shoulder. No, I haven't. Okay, so this shoulder, when you're working with knit, it's just slinky, slinky. So see, I have one shoulder sewn together, center back seam sewn together. Now I'm going to do the other shoulder. Sorry about my phone. Consider it music. <laughs> I'm sure it's Philly. Just like that. So now it's sewn. So here, you match this one notch I cut on the side, sew it from there down. The rest of it's the arm opening. And you can see it's pretty <laughs> generous. Right here. Generous arm opening. So I have little arms. So you can very easily take that up. I put the two bus darts in. There they are. I drew them on with washable marker. Center back seam. And the two side seams. So I'm going to try it on now. I'm not going to do any more work to this until I try it on and I make sure it fits me. Hold on and I'll show you. So this is the hot patterns pattern. I showed you in my video yesterday that had the stripes going all the different ways. So this is it without the stripes. I took it in all the way down the sides. I made it a 10 instead of a 12 and it fits wonderful. Now the sleeve, you can see the arm opening. <laughs> I, I don't know. What is with the arm opening? Maybe it's okay. Alright, I got a drink and I turned off my phone. <laughs> I just hope I remember to turn it back on. So you can see, there's plenty of room for me in here. Even though I have made it a size 10 now. The armholes, probably a bit big. But once I get the bands on it, maybe, you know, it'll behave and you can't see. I don't remember. <laughs> I've told you this story before, but I know I've got a bunch of new people. My friend Philly and I used to go to classes. We used to go to classes a lot. And this was a class. They were always in Texas. And we went to a class, and Cynthia Guffey was there. And Cynthia Guffey was a super, super, super couture-type seamstress. She made garments look like you bought them in a real expensive shop someplace. She was just very, very good at sewing. And so we liked to take her classes. And she was really, really good with fitting. So Philly and I both took her class and there was a big table in there and there's probably 12 women, maybe 20, sitting all around this table and Cynthia was at the front of the class. And she said, is anybody here wearing something they made? <laughs> I was, but I didn't raise my hand. Philly rose her hand. And so Cynthia Guffey said, well, come up here in front of the class. <laughs> I don't remember what top it was Philly had on, but it had really big armholes. So Cynthia Guffey picks up her arm and looks through her armhole all the way across. She said, I can see all the way across her chest and out her other arm. <laughs> I thought, I am so glad I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> So Philly and I laugh about armholes all the time to this day. I can finish this. It's perfect. I love it. I could make up another one if I had another knit. I could make up two more. It's, you can see how fast it is. It didn't take any time. 15 minutes to do this sewing part. <laughs> I'll be back. All right, I don't know where the battery decided to die. <laughs> what didn't get recorded. But let me explain this to you. This pattern, if you buy this pattern, it is not going to have a bust dart in it. So when you make it without a bust dart, you're going to end up with all kinds of fullness in here. All kinds of fullness. Because the fullness needs to be taken out. You don't have a boob under your armpit. I hope. I don't. I don't have boobs under my armpits. So, you are shorter under below your arms than you are from your shoulder down. Does that make sense, right? And so you've got to pinch the extra out at the side to make room for the lumps and the bumps. You don't have to put a belly, <laughs> thank God, <laughs> belly dart, but this is called a full bust adjustment. And I have shown it over and over and over and over and over. But the reason you think, oh my gosh, that fits so good. 
It's because it has bus darts. See, bus dart here, bus dart there. There's always two of them. No darts in the back. I need to wear it with a different kind of pants because these are kind of full. No darts in the back. So you line up the back. What if you put a round back? What if you put a sway back? I did. I put a round back for, goodness, it looks like over an inch. And I did a sway back of my usual 5 8 inch. So the round back makes the pattern come down and go out. The sway back makes the pattern go in and come out. So what we're going to do, Peggy Sagers again taught us this. Line up the top on the fold. Line up the bottom on the fold and ignore everything in between. Now this is if it doesn't have a center back seam, you understand. It goes on the fold. People say, well, how do you make it straight? That's how you make it straight. You line it up at the top, you line it up at the bottom. I'm going to pin this because the pattern paper is kind of wrinkled. And I want to make sure that it stays flat, especially on the fold. It's so much fun to sew, you guys. Well, I think it is. I think it is. Why? Why do I think it is? I cannot go to the store and buy clothes that fit me. All right, I've got that one pinned on instead of weighted down because I want to be sure I can draw the bust dart in there without it messing up. Again, I've got a straight edge here. I'll use a ruler. I've got a straight edge here. I'll use a ruler. Let's pin the back. Now this has a dolman sleeve, and I cut quite a big chunk out of it, so it wouldn't have the great big long sleeve, you know, where you can see from one side through to the other side. And I actually saved the piece I cut off so I could see it. Let me get a rotary cutter, and let's cut this out. See how the pattern sticks out there? It hangs over the folded edge because that's where the round back is. And then down here, where the sway back is, the fabric sticks out from there. But I have the bottom point. The bottom point is exactly, exactly at the fold. And the top point is exactly, exactly at the fold. The in-between we just smooth out and we don't care about all that in-between stuff. I hope that makes sense. Let's cut out the front. This is one of my favorite things. Look here how it's open on the side and open on the side. This would be a fun one to make. I think I'll make it next. And if you put the sleeve in, it's open on each sleeve. So I really like that. That's one of my favorite things about this blouse. But, I don't know, that might just let my belly just stick out like a watermelon underneath. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, i got to try it, though. I can make it longer than my belly. We'll figure it out. I had to get all of its parts out of the suitcase and get it all put back together. So now we're going to sew the woven. And I'm going to sew the woven on the Virtuosa. I could have sewn the knit here and the woven there. Sewing machine, sewing machine. <laughs> but... I knew I had to have one pink one, one black one, so I set up two machines. So that's my thinking on that in case you were, why couldn't you use just one machine? I could have. And so if you have more than one machine, you can do assembly line duty. That's what I call it. Now my sergers. I just found another serger in my attic. <laughs> I know. I had too many of them to put them all up here. I'm starting at the point of this dart. And I'm putting the needle in one side and out the other to make sure the line is totally lined up. Then I'm going to point the point down here and match my clips. And even then it might not match up. So let me put this in here. And see, oh, it matched up absolutely perfect. So it's on the green line there, and it's on the green line there. And again, I'm taking little bites. Little bites. These pins are going to have to be pulled out as I sew up this line. Now see, it's off there. So I'm just going to fiddle with it. 
I may have to stop doing this and finish it tomorrow. Because I think my friend Philly needs me. We'll see. And when I went over there to see what that was on my phone, I saw the Oreo cookies. I have a question. Do any of you know how long an Oreo cookie will last <laughs> in the bag? <laughs> These have been here for months. I don't know if I should be eating it or throwing it, throwing it away. It tastes good. It's one of those real skinny ones. I'm going to throw it away just in case. I could drop dead any minute from eating an old cookie. This one I've got on two and a half. And that's where I'm leaving it. I'm sewing off the point and I'm keeping on sewing in the air. This is the bus guard. Then I come back to the bus guard and I attach this string. Then I cut. Let me show you up close. So there's the bus guard. Green line, green line. You see how I sewed right on the green line on both sides? I start here at the big part. Peggy Sager starts at the little part. I don't agree with her on that. I think that's wrong. I start at the big part. Then I sew, 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 sew. I sew straight off the point. And then I keep on sewing so I have a string. Then I come back and I attach the string. That string's a little long, actually. <laughs> But that best part's not coming out. So I want to show you how I sew a perfect V in the front neck. I know a lot of people would like to know that if you haven't sewn a lot and you haven't figured it out. So what you do is you draw your seam line. Whatever side you're going to sew on, I'm going to sew on the facing side. I think. I might change my mind. Doesn't matter what side you sew on. Well, as long as your facing is exactly the same as your front neck, I don't think so. So what we need is a point. A pointy point. Because you want to sew right down into that point. Now some people say take two stitches across the point. Some people say take one stitch. Um, I don't know what all the people say. <laughs> I usually don't like it with two stitches unless the stitches are really tiny. If the stitches are really tiny. So what you're going to do is you're going to clip this from the point to the point. We're going to clip that because it won't sew together if you don't. Especially on the front of the blouse, we're going to clip that. Okay? So this is the 5 8 inch sewing line. We want to make sure our needle ends up right there. Right there. So I'm going to sew down here, find that point. It's nice if you have an open toe embroidery foot so you can see that point. And then go up this way. I don't know if I sew any stitches across there. I think I always sew to a point. Now, if you sew to the point and you can't get it to turn well, then you can always open it up and re-sew the point and put a couple stitches across it. I have absolutely horrible interfacing. I've got this stuff that feels like steel wool compared to what I usually use. This is Pellon Fusible Featherweight. And uh, it says it's for apparel and crafts. I don't know, I think maybe it's better for purses, but it's all I've got here. So that's what we're gonna use. So we're going to come back and mark the actual blouse. Right here is the point of the blouse, and I want to make that same line. Now here, I have um, stay stitched. I have stay stitched this neckline at half an inch. So I am going to cut this V down to that half inch mark. I don't want to go any further than that. I'm going to cut the V to where it stay stitched and not past it. Stay stitched half an inch clipped. This is center front, top center front of the neckline. What I'm going to do is draw the 5 8 inch line on the actual garment. It's on the interfacing but I'm going to draw it on the garment because I want to make sure that the point is at the point, right? Here we go, through the point. Look on the back. If it's not exact, exact, keep pinning it until it is. Now that's darn close. 
but it's not perfect. If you're in a big hurry, you're probably going to make some boo-boos here and there. If you want a nice garment, you need to take the time to do things like this. My pin is through the point of the V on the interfacing, and my pin is through the point of the V on the front of the blouse. I can clip it down a little further once I get some sewing in there. You don't want to clip it until it's sewn. Now that I have that, I'm just going to finish pinning the facing on. So you see, I have it all pinned together, and I have my line mark really, really good, and I'm going to go sew. <laughs> my viewfinder isn't right. I'm going to go sew exactly, exactly on that green line. And my battery's fixing to die again. This camera's getting so old, I don't think the batteries last very long. This is take two on showing you how I trim the neckline. <laughs> I forgot to push the record button. I've got the facing all sewn on with this <laughs> heavy, heavy facing I do not like. It's called featherweight, but I don't know. I guess they've never lifted a feather at Pellon. So you can see that I have clipped the facing side with these diagonal cuts. Notice they're diagonal. Very important. And only the facing side of the seam allowance. We're cutting the seam allowance. Clipping. This is called clipping. So then, the reason you want to cut it diagonal, I'll tell you the reason for it if I remember to tell you. We're going to come to this side, the garment, and we're going to clip it the opposite direction. So, the thing about it is that when the garment is done and this is all closed, you will not see little notches and little cuts in your top because we're cutting the opposite direction on the other side. So, instead of cutting through the whole thing and just straight cutting, learn this from Louise Cutting. She was good at cutting. <laughs> So we go the opposite way to do our angle on the other side so they don't run into each other. And I probably should have done another one up there. Yeah, I got one. And another one here, got it. And then let's go around to the back. In the back, I cut in both directions. So I cut to the center one way and then I change and cut the other way. Okay, so cut, cut, cut. Now the reason for this is it makes the neck very, very loose and open. So when you put it on your body, you're not going to rip all that apart because it will stretch. It will open up. It won't stretch where the stitching is, but it will stretch where all that is. And so you don't leave it 5 eighths inch. You come back. Now some people do what's called... Tapering? I'm not sure that's what it's called. But I don't. I just turn my scissors and I cut kind of sideways. And that kind of is automatic tapering, I think. I could be wrong. <laughs> but the idea is you want these two things to be different lengths from each other. Get you some good scissors. See, so I'm just, instead of cutting like this, I'm cutting like this. And that tapers it enough for the guys I go with. I've never had anybody say, oh my gosh, that doesn't look properly tapered, Joy. This is how Philly does it. Now, I don't know how she does the tapering. But I know this is how she does the clips at an angle. Because we both went to Louise Cutting's class. Several of Louise Cutting's classes, actually. She was a wonderful teacher. Wonderful teacher. So now it's Thursday. It's February 22, 2024. 2 22 24. That's a fun day to get married. No, it would be 2 24 24. You know, people are always getting married on fancy dates. Um, I had a calamity yesterday. <laughs> Several. I finished this pink blouse. But the interfacing is horrible, just horrible. When you can see the interfacing through your blouse and when you can feel it, 
on your body. It is horrible interfacing. I need to throw this entire thing away. But Philly and I are talking about making purses or tote bags. I need another tote bag. Oh my goodness, I have so many tote bags. If I was at the other house, I'd show you. I'm not kidding. The blouse is cute. It fits me fine, but I cannot stand the interface neckline. I just hate it. And I also don't like that it's so open, that it's open like way over here. And so I have redrawn my paper pattern again. Yes, my other blouses were like that. But moving the shoulder, my other blouses were like that. But since I've moved the shoulder over, for some reason it made the V just look too open underneath the new shoulder. So you see the green part? That's my new V-neck because I didn't want it that open across my upper chest. I hope that makes sense. Something about adding on this half inch just made that go in too far. The French curve, uh, you know, I lined up the French curve, but I ended the French curve right here. So I put the French curve back on it and just made it go out all the way to the center front and I raised the center front a little bit. So you can constantly make changes to your paper. When I show you my patterns, <laughs> I know you think, what on earth has she done to that? You see here how I cut off the dolman sleeve? If you're going to do an FBA in a garment that the paper pattern has a dolman sleeve, in order to do the FBA, you don't want to do your uh, FBA all the way out through the sleeve. So you cut the sleeve off, do your FBA, and then you put the sleeve back on, and you can see that it has a little bit of extra right here. But that's okay. We need the extra. It's probably part of the FBA, actually. You know, you just can't have too much extra in some areas. <laughs> I also moved the bust dart back. Bust darts can be back an inch, they can be back a half inch, they can be back an inch and a half. Um, you can put it where you need it to be. This bust dart, even though I'm over here, and my bust dart ended here, it's too close, I didn't like it, so I have backed it off. So see, that's two more changes I've done to this pattern, and I've already made this thing three or four times. So we'll see how it turns out. I'm, the pink one's going in the trash. Are you serious? I'm very serious. I don't like the pink fabric at all. I'll keep the part that I haven't cut yet. I'll keep it, so don't get too stressed out. But the pink blouse is going in the trash. I don't like it. I don't ever want to look at it again. I'm never going to wear it. It's also quite sheer, um, which I was surprised. I could see my waistband through it, and I thought, I wouldn't have thought this was sheer at all. But it is what it is. I can use it for a backing. It actually was a backing. Oh, I can't use it for a backing unless it's a really tiny quilt. I think I'll throw the whole thing away. I know. I can hear you. I'm seeing you falling on the ground gasping. I don't want to move anything else back and forth between my taxes. <laughs> it's in the trash. It's staying in the trash. And I have a new piece of fabric. And Jerry's waiting for me. Um, I told you I'd have two blouses tongue yesterday, and I actually almost did. But then Jerry needed me to help him with the grill. You know, he's putting a grill together. I'll show you a picture right here. Jerry's waiting for me now to go downstairs because we're going to take his boat. Um, at the end of every season, you do something to your boat, something about an impeller or something, and we're taking it for this little service treatment that they do. Um, I don't know where we're taking it, but uh, some little town around here. And then we're going to go to lunch because one of our favorite restaurants has built their own building and they have a new location, and so we want to go there and see how that turned out. And then I need to get some groceries. I'll tell you... <laughs> oh. When I went to Mounds last time, I loaded up almost all the groceries. You know, everything is perishable you have to take. And I took almost all our canned goods and the, the uh, pastas and just so many things. And so I keep going to cook, and I'll cook a roast beef, and I have one potato. I only had one potato to go with roast beef. <laughs> I had some carrots. 
one potato. And so then what did I make the day before? Oh, I found the ham from Thanksgiving. And it was frozen. It was one of those spiral hams. So I thought it out. I said, oh, we can eat this ham. And so then, what am I going to serve with this ham? I had nothing. So I left a bunch of beans here. Back a year or two ago, we watched this YouTube video. What does this have to do with sewing? Nothing, but it has to do with me. So um, some lady had a video, and she's got some channel all about how to stay healthy. And according to her, if you eat beans every day, you won't have high blood pressure. And at that time, Jerry had high blood pressure. I had high blood pressure. I was on some pill too. And so I thought, oh, great. Well, I'll just start getting these beans. And so I went on Amazon and I ordered dried beans, every kind of bean there is in the world. <laughs> and then I ordered canned beans. So evidently, when we went to Mounds the last time, our other house, our new house, I left all the canned beans here. So that lady had a recipe for some kind of a salad. It's really, really good. If you like balsamic vinegar, oh, I love balsamic vinegar. Really good. You put um, Catalini beans. I won't remember them all. Carbuncle beans. Carbuncle beans. I've done this. <laughs> Garbanzo. Garbanzo. Catalini garbanzo and black beans. And I, th I think it's just three cans, three different kinds of beans. And then you dump them all out and you wash them all off and you drain them. And then you make this um, sauce to go on them. And you add chopped bell pepper and you add um, halved cherry tomatoes. I didn't have any of those, but I had one. I had one Roma tomato. So I chopped it up and put it in there. <laughs> anyway, it is very very good. So we've had, we had beans three days in a row. We had ham and beans, we had roast beef and beans, we had beans and a ham sandwich. <laughs> so Jerry's saying, why don't you come with me and we can stop by the grocery store? <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. I'll be back. <laughs> so the first one we're going to call the muslin, even though I've made it several times before. You know, when you lose weight, your body changes in different places it's just really strange you know five pounds kind of a lot for a pattern so i don't know what happened other than i wanted it closer to my neck this will definitely keep my bra straps covered up great great fix on that bust dart move back great fix on that dolman sleeve always a problem for me you can see if i could get it to hang right hang down clown well you can see how big the armhole is see my arm see the armhole big doesn't really matter you know as long as i don't hold it up and someone doesn't stick their head in there we'll be okay but i want you to see how big it is here so i have simply taken some pins and pinned let me do another pin so see how i put those pins there so now I can see, do I have, oh, one of them's poking me. Oh, oh. <laughs> if you don't want to be poked, don't sew. <laughs> and don't quilt. So you can see, I can take out, goodness, an inch at least, under the arm, under here, and here, too. And it's got a slit there, but I can still close it up and move forward, backwards. Make sure you can move. Ah, the shoulder slope is perfect. The V is perfect. <laughs> you know, if I put something on in this stage and I just hate it, that's as far as it's going. And that's what happened yesterday. I just could not stand that thing. Now, here's the next thing. If you've only got a stiff interfacing, this is really poking me, y'all. Um, if you've only got a stiff interfacing, I would say don't even interface it. Just put the facing, put the facing on without any interfacing because it will be much softer. That other one was so thick that you just could see this big white band inside and it was stiff and I could feel it. You shouldn't be able to feel your interfacing. So I got on Amazon. Uh, we were sitting um, at Sonic a while ago having a shake and I got on Amazon, to, I thought, I wonder if they sell interfacing. And I figured it would just be junk if they did. But they had one that said it was very lightweight. 
and it had a whole bunch of reviews and some of the women said oh this was just too thin it was too thin and I thought yes that's what I want too thin so you can see if I'll stand still you can see that side pinned and this side not pinned now since it's a dolman you're not going to get rid of all of this you can't but believe me having the bust dart I have gotten rid of a whole lot of it and so it's going to look a whole lot better has to have a hem, has little slits, oh, I love it. This fabric I bought, no kidding, 20, maybe 30 years ago at Hancock's because I know the house we lived in when we bought it. And I bought it at Hancock's and it was what was called, they didn't call it this, but I call it this, it was called fake linen or pretend linen or linen-like. Maybe it was called linen-like. And it's 100% cotton and it's got the little raised areas in it. Um, with the little tiny bubbles here and there. And I think I actually made it inside out. I don't know. I couldn't tell which side was right and which was wrong. But, uh, yeah. So, when I finish this, I will show it to you all done. And when I finish the black net, I will show it to you all done. And I'll have two new blouses. And then I've just absolutely got to make myself stop. You know, this is so much fun for me. It is so enjoyable for me. To me, this is relaxing. This is anti-stress. Anti oh, and then when I get to do it at the same time with Philly, we both just love it. We just laugh and laugh. And I'm poking myself with the pin. <laughs> going to deflate something if I don't watch out. <laughs> So what do you do? You put those pins in. So I had the pins in on the other side. I had the pins in over here. So I pulled it to the inside and I marked it with these little green friction marks. Friction marks go away with heat. So there I've got my curve that I want to correct it. And you can see, goodness, that's almost two inches. I probably won't take that much out, but still it gives me a good idea of where I can start. So you go back to your French curve. I don't have my big French curve. I wish I did. I evidently took them both to the other house. Oh, oh well. Now look at that. Do you see how that French curve, you may not see it. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Right exactly on that curve. It's amazing. Look at that. Amazing. Now, can I cut it in that far? Probably not. So let's put, that's where my pins were. Let's see how I can get a nice, smooth mark. Now, I told you, these friction markers dry up so fast, it's ridiculous. Let's try this pink one, see if it can work. It lines up if you turn it this way, too. Yes. All right, so you can see here is a straight line. So I want when I adjust it to make it a straight line too. So it looks like it's an exact inch from the outside there. An exact inch. So I'm going to go like that and go like that. It starts to curve right here, see? And here I'm going to follow the same shape as the edge here. So from the seam line where I sewed it, where the stitches are, it's 5 8 inch. So 5 8 and 5 8 is 10 8 and so what is that, one and a quarter total that I'm taking out of this arm? That's a lot. Right here, I've got three quarters of an inch. Or is that a whole inch? Oh my goodness, that is a whole inch. So I'm not going to take that much. But I know that I can take a chunk out of here, and this will still fit me because that's where I had my pins. So this is another area where you just take your time. You've got to line it up above the bus dart. I don't know where we can line it up at. We'll see. Find a place, find a place. All right, I think what I'll do is I'll follow the curve that's already here in the stitches. Here's my stitches. That's the thread where I sewed it. This is the surged edge out here. So if I'm gonna take 5 eighths, actually that's um, 3 quarters. I will take 3 quarters everywhere else. This is an easy way to do it, and then you can line it up with your French curve if you need to. Three quarters, 
and then bring it in. You gotta bring it in. So we'll start right there, yeah. See, that could do. And then that straightens. Put this on the stitching line. You can just hear me thinking in my head. I don't do this every day. So sometimes I really have to stop and think. In fact, if you want to do Jennifer Stern's way and Judy Kessinger's way, just draw a, a pretend line that you think, yeah, see like that, that will work good. Yeah, see there? And so I'm taking less here, less here, less here, a little more here. Even though I started clear over here where the green line is. I'm not going to go up that far because it would be too drastic a change from here to here. Okay? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stitch on this pink curve. Right there. Now how am I going to get the other side the same as this side? That is a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to go sew this side right now. Oh, I'll let you know later what I did to get the other side the same way. I have sewn. I have stitched here. Let me show you where I've stitched. I changed the curve a little. You can curve your sewing machine so much easier than you can, you know, midair. So that's my actual stitches that I took. I'm still removing a pretty good chunk. So we'll see how that goes. But I want to, you know, if I put this on, I still think it's too big. I can do this over and over again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these together and I'm gonna take my cupcake and I'm gonna poke a hole through. Not where I originally had pins, because we're past that now. Here's the original pins, and I am going to mark the other side so I can sew it exactly the same. Now, if your sides are different, <laughs> you'll have to do them individually. You know. The pins coming through the other sleeve. So I'm going to draw dots here, and then that's exactly where I'm going to stitch. And then I'm going to trim it really close. There you go. So now I know. I told you there was a way. You just have to stop and think. Now, somebody else might have a super, super <laughs> amazing way to do that other than what I just decided, but that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna trim it, I'm gonna surge it, and then I'll try it on again and see if I like it any better. Well, here it is again. Try it on. Now, it still has plenty of dolman ease. You can see, it's still got the big extra here. I could take it in more, but I'm not going to. You know, people know a dolman is supposed to be full under the arm. So even though I could take it in more, I'm not going to. The sleeve is, um, what did I take in? Three quarters and three quarters, so an inch and a half less. So you can see now the sleeve, you couldn't like stick your head in there. So <laughs> I know people do that, you know. The only thing is, I wish I could embroider it now, but if you're going to embroider a top, you've got to do it before you cut it out. So, too late for that, but I've got a ton more of this fabric. I must have, goodness, at least three more yards. So, I can make it again, maybe a different style, and I can do embroidery. So, it's Friday, February 24 now, and this video is already like an hour and a half long. So, I'm just going to stop it. Stop. How do you stop it? X. <laughs> I'm going to stop it right here, and I'll just start a different video finishing those two tops, okay? Love you guys.